Hey everybody, Dennis from the Well Bros here. Me and Robbie are shooting a couple solo videos and uh, I'm using the selfie stick right now with my iPhone 6. Looks like the quality might actually come out a little bit better than what we normally get with that camera we use, so that's interesting. But um, today I want to talk to you guys about death awareness and try to tried to time these clouds so that they would be, you know, blocking the sun out, but I might be blind for most of this video. It's okay. Now, death awareness. Um, I want to say, going into this video, that this topic isn't really for the faint of heart, and not everyone's going to like it or want to go along with, you know, what I described to you in it, but um, it's... It's big. It's uh, it's something that can make very dramatic changes in your life if it's something you want to work with. And um, I'll explain it. So death denial is sort of the norm in our culture. It, and pretty much, I would imagine most cultures, if not all, um, human the human mind, I feel like, just automatically kind of doesn't think about its impending doom very often not enough to make it real like it's a real thing like it's just a distant concept for definitely most of us in the Western world and we can say that for a fact and um, it's just this the natural way of things at least the way we live to be denying it but death awareness is something that you can practice that will uh, it'll do certain things um, for one thing, it'll make you, you know, well, let me first describe what you do. You just imagine your death and just really try to make it real. Like picture it about to happen or picture if you had to die tomorrow, what would you think about your life? What would your reflections and thoughts be, you know? What are your evaluations in the final sense of your life? Like, what would you regret? That's the type of thing that comes to mind when you're viv vividly imagining your death. And um, the way it serves you is that it kind of pushes trivial things to the side and sifts all the important things in your life through a filter and uh, allows you to look at the big picture of what your life is, brings it into sharp, clear focus, and, you know that has implications like if you're unsatisfied with your current circumstances in life and you're practicing death awareness you're gonna feel that it's gonna create a lot of discomfort and it's gonna be I mean if you continue the practice it's gonna be enough to just it's gonna make you so uncomfortable with a bad life or a life that you don't feel like is correct for you that you're gonna have to change it you know it's trial by fire here you're gonna you're putting yourself into the flames by using this practice um, that's why it's not for everybody I mean some people just want to sleepwalk through life and tell themselves that they're on the right path and never really really question it death awareness isn't something you can just get like from thinking about it for 10 20 minutes one time even you have to be doing this every day uh, whenever you can, if you really want to, you know, take this concept and m make you really realize it. And um, it's not just to create discomfort with a life that you don't like, it's to create appreciation for the life that you have. And if you're forcing yourself to do things that suck every day, then <laughs> death awareness is going to make you hate that. But it's also gonna make you just savor what you have. I mean, what I'm looking at right now is beautiful, and I'm loving it. And uh, it's not good. It's not entirely because you know, death awareness. I've been doing it for a couple weeks, and uh, I'm feeling the effects already. But it just it creates gratitude and appreciation. Let me give you a perspective of someone who is shocked into death awareness through. A near-death experience uh, this is kind of well documented what happens is if you have a near-death experience and you survive for a while a little while afterward not very long 
you're glowing and your perspective has totally shifted and life is amazing and you're just baffled at the fact that all the people around you aren't <laughs> savoring every bit of it and just treating it like the precious thing that it is. Um, but that tends to fade for people who don't make it a mental practice. I'll give you an example. Um, so in The Sopranos, which is, you know, the, a TV show, um, pretty much universally agreed as the best TV show ever, mainly in terms of how it depicts the human condition, like a very accurate representation of just the things we all struggle with. Um, Tony Soprano in the sixth season has a near-death experience, and he survives, and afterward he's just changing his whole outlook on life, he's leaving all the bad stuff behind, he, like he was a gangster in the show, um, most people know that, but he was going to put all the bad stuff behind him and focus on his family and just be grateful for everything, loving life, and then the stuff, the realities of his life set back in and you know, ground that down over a little while. He just, you know, the bad stuff he does as a gangster, but also just the realities of like money and family and just day-to-day -day grievances and troubles, that pulled him back down and he quickly lost what he had gained. Uh, it was pretty sad <laughs> to witness. And it's because if you just have this thing wash over you, all of a sudden, all of a sudden like a shock to the system, through something like that, you didn't go through this mentally and really recondition the way you look at the world. Um, you're getting a brief taste of what life would be like if you truly savored it, but you haven't changed your life in such a way that, you know, annoying little things aren't still going to be bothering you every day. Um, whereas death awareness, over time, the idea is that it kind of forces you to create a life like that. A life that you truly love and appreciate and enjoy every day. The Roman philosopher Seneca said, the man who has learned how to die has unlearned how to be a slave. I love quotes and stuff, poems and rhymes. I'm probably gonna put up on my wall a Dr. Seuss rhyme I saw about it. It's not really even about death, but just something that reminds me of the impermanence of life. It's, it amounts to the same thing. It'll remind me to think of it. Uh, it goes, how did it get so late so soon? It's night before it's afternoon. December is here before it's June. My goodness, how the time has flown. How did it get so late so soon? That's Dr. Seuss. <laughs> I don't know if I mentioned that right before. I, I might have. And uh, I like it a lot. Just, you know, I love the Dr. Seuss rhyming style. Reminds me of being a kid. <laughs> it's just playful, but... I love that rhyme and um, it's a great reminder this is something I'm trying to do from now on because the fact is whether you like it or not we are all gonna die it's the realest thing that ever happens to anybody and everybody and if it's gonna benefit me to really know that and live as though I've fully internalized and processed that fact then I'm gonna do it and um, if that sounds good to you guys, then you should all try it too. And if not, then whatever. I mean, what you do is up to you in the end. I'm, this point of this channel isn't to tell people how to live their lives. It's just me and Robbie are thoughtful about this stuff and we care about making our lives as good as we can, getting as much out of them as we can. And this is about sharing all that. So, thank you for watching. Um, like, comment, subscribe if you want to. <laughs> it would definitely help us out. Um, well, bros, I'm Dennis. I'll see you next time.